where I'm at. Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land? Where am I? Yeah. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than copper to silk, and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than wood, and all the things you may desire cannot be fair with her. Length of days is in her right hand, and her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who will take her. I read Proverbs 3, chapter 3, verses 13 to 18. May the Lord have a blessing in the hearing of his read and edification for our soul. Let's have a break. Most gracious time, Father God. Again, Father, we come to you once again, Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for all you've done this week with present morning. Thank you, Heavenly Father, when we roll this morning, Father, you were still there beside us, my Father. And then I just want to say thank you, Heavenly Father. You are the one, Father, we want to know about it. Ups and downs and trials and tribulations, Father, you know, there are things that we ourselves don't understand, Father, but you know what we're going through, and you will see us through our power of peace. Just believe and hear your word. Just believe in what you say you will find. We ask prayer for the second setting. Those of our fathers who are hospitals, those at home, those of our fathers who just don't know what they want to do with themselves. Father, we ask you prayer for them, especially Father, these times that we're going to thank you, Father. We ask prayer for our church family as well, as the first lady. We ask prayer for the second setting all over the world. Father God, this is my prayer this morning. We ask all these blessings. And that Son of Jesus name, Christ says, we pray to Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. Let me do our altar prayer before we go into a lesson. And as a, a lesson, I'm starting a series this time. Uh, God, the Holy Spirit. And we today we're going to take an overview, but let us pray for. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you just to say thank you, first of all, Father. We thank you for being who you are. And then, Father, we thank you for the Godhead, for being part of the Godhead that is so lovingly. For each member of the Godhead plays his role in the lives of humanity and all creation. Father, we just thank you because of you being who you are. And Father, I ask that you touch the sick everywhere father whoever they are there's so many names on the sick list lord i don't uh, can't remember them all and i didn't print them off to read them all but father you know who they are that they are your children just as i am and we are and father just as you heal in the bible days and just as you're healing now you're still healing because you are the bomb in gillian you are the perfect doctor with the perfect medicine and father we ask that you administer your medicine this this morning, Father, to all those who stand in need, whether it's a physical or a spiritual sickness. Then, Father, to comfort and touch the hearts of man's of mind. Father, there's so much evilness in this world. Father, we don't know which way to turn, but we know who, and we know the turn to you. We can get confused sometimes with all being bombarded with all of the wickedness and the hatefulness. And, Father, we know that is not view. But, Father, help us to keep our eyes focused on you. And, Father, in spite of all of this calamity, you are still God, and you will still be God from now on, and you, as you were from the beginning of time. And in the end of time, you will be God. And, Father, I ask that you just uh, speak to me as I bring this message. Looking at the Godhead, uh, the Holy Spirit of the Godhead. And Father, we need to know that the Holy Spirit lives in every one of us, and He's still God. And Lord, we thank you. And Father, I thank you in advance for answering this prayer, Lord, as we are praying in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. Okay, if I had to use a scripture 
this morning will be Acts 5th chapter, verses 3 and 4. Acts 3 and 4? Mm -hmm. Acts 5th chapter of Acts, verses 3 and 4. Okay? I'm not going to read them per se, but I'm going to talk about them in that. And we are looking at them, doing an overview, as I said earlier. We are uh, do a series on the Holy Spirit. And today we're going to look at and, um, and that maybe answer the question is who is the Holy Spirit? And there are several scriptures that looks at the Holy Spirit, his doctrinal teaching, his name, his emblem, his ministries, and the activities of the Holy Spirit that he played in the Old Testament and, and even to his interaction with Jesus and his relationship with Christians the world over. But today we're just going to do an overview of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. And as I said, we answer the question, we're going to try and answer the question, who is the Holy Spirit? And I used to hear people refer to the Holy Spirit as an it. The Holy Spirit is not an it. He is a live, living, breathing person. He is the third person in the Godhead. And he has a will. And this is where it's going to take into Acts 5, 3, and 4. But comes to mind when he said, uh, when Ananiah and Sapphira lied about what they gave to the church and they felt dead, okay? Uh, he has a will, okay? And he is as much God as God the Father and God the Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Savior. And I've often referred to them, and we don't get to that a little bit later, uh, the three distinctive offices of the Holy Spirit. And I always have to remind people that God, Jesus Christ, who is God, is our Savior because he died for us. God, the Holy Spirit, is our keeper because he resides in us to help us navigate this earthly life because we are heaven bound. He is our teacher, he's our guide, and he's our conscious that speaks to our mind and our consciousness of what's right and what's wrong. So being that Ananias and Sapphira lied to the Holy Spirit about what they was giving God is blasphemy. We are not to lie to the Holy Spirit. Lying to the Holy Spirit is just the same as uh, lying to God because he is God. And all believers should know better than to lie to the Holy Spirit. So why would they want to do that? Well, I don't know why they wanted to do that. Because knowing that God is all-knowing, and he would know the hearts of men, uh, I, I, I can't comprehend why believers, or supposedly be believers, would lie to the Holy Spirit, okay? Well, you know that sometimes we feel that uh, just because man didn't see my wrongdoings or didn't know, uh, I've got away with it. No, you did not, because God, the Holy Spirit, knows all things because and i keep repeating this for a reason to hammer home the point he is god and who is all known he knows what our thoughts are okay what's it gonna be before we're thinking well we cannot perceive god the holy spirit at any time so uh, and i guess if i had to look back at the lesson i uh, talking about the scripture uh acts 5 3 and 4 when they lied about what they gave to the church, they were trying to fool Peter, but then the Holy Spirit said no. You know, we see that same thing today. Sometimes we 
though the church won't know what we are giving in our time. But one thing about it, God knows. And when we being dishonest with God, guess what? That's just the same as being lying to the Holy Spirit. But we should not do that because he, if we don't want him to strike us down. Okay? Now, I know a scripture I want to give you on um, the Holy Spirit knows all things. John 14 and 7. And it states this. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, and he dwell with you, and he shall be in, in you. Therefore, he, God the Holy Spirit, is looked upon as the Spirit of truth, because he is the true, the Spirit of Jesus Christ, who is true. So, then why not be truthful with the Holy Spirit and our fellow man? Because as I said, we cannot fool the Holy Spirit because he's God and he knows and he's all he knows the truth. Neither can we fool any members of the Godhead because they're all God now and who knows everything. And um, in the end, if we try and keep lying to men, but we never lie, we never get away with it, uh, our lies to the Holy Spirit, eventually those lies are going to be exposed. What's okay. going on today? Lies, deceit, hate, racism, and all injustices is being exposed. Why? Because God is tired of the lies and the hatefulness and all of the injustices. And I know we have to study in one of our Sunday school lessons about injustices is going to come to a, an abrupt end. Truth is going to prevail because it is from God and God prevails all the time and he will allow injustices to run for a while because he is giving humanity time to repent and turn from their wicked ways yes but he have to turn you and I, maybe I should, he, if he have to turn us from our wicked ways we may not like his turning method and let me say this to you uh, this COVID-19 uh, coronavirus probably is going to be one of the methods that God is using to get our attention for all of those who really have some kind of understanding of uh, acknowledgement of who God is because he wants us to turn back to him. All of this sin and wickedness is worse than I have ever seen it in all of my days and I've been here for a minute. Yes. Our sin have already been in the world, but each generation is getting worse and worse and worse. And I, I and I thought sin was bad enough when I was a child growing up in the South, the Jim Crow segregated South. You had a black and white water fountains, and you couldn't go in the same theater, and you couldn't go sit down in, in the front door of the restaurant at the lunch counter uh, to eat. I thought it was bad enough now, but now. It is even worse than that. Yeah, we can go sit down and eat everywhere, but are we welcome? They've got smart enough to say, I just want your money. I agree, but I don't really care if you come in or not. That is not of God, because that's a form of hate. God is love, and he loves everybody, because he created us all the same. And he told us, we have to love our neighbor as ourselves. That is the second commandment, and if we don't do that, we are out of fellowship with God, and he is not going to allow uh, his people to continue to be oppressed and mistreated. So anytime you tell anybody, I love you, and then stabbing us in the back, that is not of God and is not love. 
Okay. Let me do another school of thought. That the church has abandoned the truth and abandoned the Lord, and we know that Christ is the head of the church. We want to be the head of the church. I don't know why we got that notion from, and we want to come and worship him in our little bodies, and when we're supposed to come and worship God in spirit and in truth, now that's found in John 4 and 24, and the scriptures does not lie. That scripture been around since time, and it's going to be around, and if we're going to come and worship the Lord, we must worship him in spirit and in truth. He yes. has to be the center focus of our worship. And let me say this about coming to worship. If we on a Wednesday night of a Bible study, those people, the olden days, will come and that would be just like a, a Sunday morning worship service. You have this sister over in this corner over here and break out one of those songs and, and it meant something and was saying a song, and then she'd pray a prayer, and then sister over there would get up and read her scripture That's before she would pray a prayer. That was truly worship, and then people were coming together in the spirit of God and in the truth of God, knowing that they was coming to lay their uh, all at the altar and praying for different, not only just for self, but for others. And, and, and I'm talking about worshiping God in spirit and in truth, whether it's on a Sunday morning, whether it's on a Bible study, by prayer meeting and Bible study. It wasn't just a uh, Bible study, it was a prayer meeting. When they said we're coming to a prayer meeting, we're coming to praying to God and we are expecting an answer. Let me give you this, this example about coming to a prayer meeting expecting a prayer. I, I heard this story that it had, hadn't been no rain in many days. And they said, well, let's just come to church and have a prayer meeting praying for rain. Okay. All of the rest of the members gathered in there. Didn't bring an umbrella and everything. This one old lady came in her rain gear and her umbrella. And they said, why are you coming here? Like she said, this is a prayer meeting for rain, isn't it? She said, when I leave, I expect it to be rain. So when you are praying in truth and in honesty to God, you are expecting him to answer. We, what we do know about God is that he is a prayer hearing and answering God. Yes. Okay. Let me continue on presenting the uh, Holy Spirit and his creative activities and him knowing all things. Look at this. He was present and active in the world since his creation. Genesis 1 and 2 talks of him being as the moving or the hovering over creation. What was he doing? He was preserving and preparing it for God the Father's creative activity. Okay? Walk with me now. He was present doing creation. All right? He was. That's, that's Genesis 1 and 2. He is, the Bible says, he's the mover over creation. Let me repeat that. What he was doing was he was preparing it, preserving it, and preparing it for God, creative activity. When you look at God's creative activity from day one all the way through, seven days. Okay? Now, so therefore, the Holy Spirit knows all things, and that is supported in 1 Corinthians, second chapter verses 10 and 11. Uh, and it's only befitting that we as believers give the Holy Spirit his proper place in our lives. Not only was he present during creation and all, he's still active 
in the lives of believers. He is still sustaining creation. Okay, if we ask this question, how is he active in my life? Well, let's look at it this way. He's that small voice of our consciousness remind us when we are getting ready to error or make an unwise decision. He prompts us, no, that is not right. Remember, he is God. He lives in us. And he teaches us. He gives us understanding of the Holy Scriptures. When you read uh, a verse or a scripture that you don't quite understand, you can ask, Lord, give me understanding. Tell me what this means. And he will so graciously reveals what the scripture is saying to you. He reveals the Holy Spirit as our revealer, the Holy Spirit as our teacher, the Holy Spirit as our God. Okay? Yes. He is active in our lives. And he will remain active in our lives. As long as we be on this earth and we get to heaven, yeah, he has become a spirit. Okay. Therefore, we can conclude this on the, not conclude, but we can come to the understanding or the agreement that God, the Holy Spirit, is all powerful. You find that in Luke, first verse, in the 35th chapter. First, first chapter of Luke, 35th verse of Luke. Uh, Psalm 139, verses 7 to 13, says he's everywhere. I believe the scriptures. Well, if you ask the question, how is he everywhere? Well, he's one of the part of the Godhead who is everywhere. Just as he was active in creation, the process, and it sustains us today, active in our lives. Therefore, he's all known. He's everywhere. He bears all truth. Seeing that God, the Holy Spirit, bears all truth, bring me to discussion of. We don't want to get to his works right now, but I, we've talked about him a little bit, and hope next week we probably go into him. So, we hopefully have made the case identifying who the Holy Spirit is. He has divine attributes in the Godhead. Number one. He's eternal. Let me just read uh, Hebrew 9 and 14, which it talks about the blood of Jesus Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself, Jesus Christ offered himself without spot to God to purge our consciousness from dead works so we could serve a living God. God, the Holy Spirit, is omnipresent, meaning that he is universal. God, the Holy Spirit, cannot be limited by space because he's boundless. He's everywhere throughout the universe. Uh, God the, um, is omnipotent, God, the Holy meaning that he is all-powerful, just as I stated. Uh, when we talk about Luke 1 35 about the scripture the Holy Spirit told Mary that he was going to overshadow her to bring forth his son Jesus Christ so that Jesus Christ's father was God Mary it was his earthly mother 
después. Divinity and humanity merged together because God was setting the stage for the ultimate sin atonement to be made by his son Jesus Christ, who had to be the atoner, had to be both human and divine. Jesus Christ was the only one found worthy who met God the Father's requirement. Why? Because he was sinless, number one. He had to, the atoner had to be sinless, as well as being human and divine. Okay? Now, as we continue to look at an overall of answering the question, who is the Holy Spirit? And I've said that he is one of the persons in the Godhead. There's unity in the Godhead. There is no division in the Godhead because that's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They work in unity on behalf of mankind and all of creation. God, the Holy Spirit, he works co-equally, co-internally, and co-existently with the other members of the Godhead. I have tried to explain it by this way, saying God the Father is the Creator, God the Son is the Savior, God the Holy Spirit sustains us. But let me, I want to look at the Trinity from executive is the father the architect is the son and the contractor is god the holy spirit just like the president is the executive officer the house and the senate are the uh, the architects who makes the laws and the judicial system is the one who carries out the law is that confusing hope not let's go through <laughs> hope not Let's go through it once more. The executive is God the Father. The architect is the Son. The contractor is the Holy Spirit. The president is the executive officer. The House and the, and the Senate are the architects, all right, who makes the law and the judicial system one who carries out the laws, who enforce the laws. So we see that the Godhead works in complete harmony and unity with one another. Each function doing what they do without saying, I'm above you, I'm bigger than you, I'm more important. Each part is equally as important. There is no squabbling in the in the in the Godhead, and it, you don't they not talk, you never find anywhere that one says, and I'm using this word trumps who um, who's more powerful, because that's not. And if I can close with this segment, we're gonna close this segment up, uh, looking at the Holy Spirit by summarize each member of the Godhead have distinctive roles and they serve in that distinctive roles for the betterment of mankind and all of creation. There is no disunity in the Godhead. In Christ's church there should not be any disunity in the church because each member of the church has a distinctive role. I'll use the word play. Uh, they are serving in a role that is allowed by God and is not for self, but it is a role by God. We have to know who we are and whom we are serving. And God. So if we can say, without a doubt, 
The Holy Spirit is not an it. The living, breathing person. He is a member of the God. He was still God. He's fully God. And when we think and we recognize or we remember that we have the God of all creation living in us, living in us for our betterment is worthy uh, is calls for a shout of hallelujah and thanksgiving and a thank you God because it speaks to the magnitude of his love and if we intensify for me make it personal the magnitude of his love he would come and take residence in little old me help me guide my way so when this earthly tabernacle is over yes i have a home that's not made by hand let us pray dear heavenly father we thank you for the holy spirit we thank you because he lives in us father we thank you not only is he living in us guiding us and he's directing our path and if we just follow his direction we are assured of a smooth highway to heaven father i ask that you just let this message resonate with some person thank you in advance for answering this prayer as we are praying it in the name of your son jesus Amen. Amen. Yes, uh, God be with you. God be with you until we meet again.